Howdy guys, Jimmy Song here. In this video, I'm going to talk about hardware wallets and specifically firmware updates that come along with them. Now, uh, if you don't know what a firmware update is, uh, firmware is somewhere between hardware and software. So typically there's a, there's software that's on uh, you know, a device that needs to be updated or something. Um, but uh, oftentimes it's tied to the hardware. So it's something in between hard and soft, which is firm firmware. Um, and a, uh, a lot of uh, hardware wallets have firmware up with updates that need to happen because, uh, you know, automatic software updates don't happen on those things. And uh, you need to um, update the firmware by uh, pressing certain buttons uh, and doing a, some sort of button combination. And then uh, the device will update on its own um, using uh, the update updating process that it does. So um, in this video, I'm going to go over some of the things that you definitely should do before you update uh, firmware on your Trezor, Ledger, KeepKey, whatever hardware device that you have. So uh, first thing that you're going to need to do is to make sure that you have your backup seed handy. Oftentimes what happens is that uh, if anything goes wrong in the firmware update process, you will oftentimes just brick the entire thing. Um, and certain types of firmware updates mean that you will need to um, re-enter the seed. Um, and oftentimes you need to you need the entire uh, phrase uh, in order to restore that seed onto the device. Uh, now remember your mnemonic seed, usually uh, 12 to 24 words, um, that is equivalent to your Bitcoin. If somebody gets a hold of that, then that means that you have lost all the Bitcoins on that wallet. So you have to be very um, careful with it and you have to make sure that you are practicing good security when you are doing a firmware update don't do it out in public for example um make sure that you are alone uh that that no one can like peer in and see your uh, mnemonic seed or something like that um and make sure you uh you have it handy though in case uh the thing bricks oftentimes it's very helpful if you have a second copy of the device because you can always restore um, your uh, mnemonic seed into a new device if necessary. And uh, with that device, you can upgrade the firmware before that happens and so on. Um, but either way, um, you're, you're going to want the mnemonic seed there. Um, second thing is make sure that it is plugged in um, and you know drawing power and so on. Um, again, it, it can very easily brick. I, I know that's happened to me in the past. Oftentimes, if you just uh, email the manufacturer after it bricks and just sort of, sort of share with them a video showing that it doesn't turn on or anything, they will just send you another one and uh, you know not not think much of it. But it's uh, it's very important that you do all of the uh, procedures exactly as they say. Um, oftentimes on a treasure, you have to like press both, both buttons at once. With Ledger, it's uh, it's not open source, uh, so it's it's not entirely clear, um, <clears throat> you know, why, why it's done that uh, a particular way and so on. So you have to be very, very careful. Now, if you can't help it, you, you don't really need to upgrade the firmware. Oftentimes the firmware upgrade is necessary because uh, one of the altcoins that's supported by that manufacturer um, uh, had some sort of a hard fork, and that means that uh, the firmware needs updating because the signing algorithm changed uh, permanently and is not backwards compatible, in which case they have to upgrade the um, firmware. This is, this is one of the reasons why Trezor... Um, had a firmware upgrade that required a complete reset, uh, you have to re-enter the mnemonic seed after that particular firmware upgrade. Um, if you can get away with not doing it, that's totally fine. Oftentimes, unless there's some sort of security vulnerability patch that was applied, and it applies to one of the coins that you own, um, you probably don't need to do it. But if you do need to do it uh, because you know, you happen to have uh, Zcash when they did their hard fork or something like that, then you you definitely do need to make sure that that does happen. So, um, you know, the, the, those are the main things like, uh, you know, like keep the, keep the uh, mnemonic seed handy before you do an upgrade. And, you know, if, if you don't need to, try not to do it. And if you can have some sort of a backup device that's uh, the equivalent 
um, oftentimes you're dealing with lots of money. So, you know, having the, uh, an extra device there, just in case your thing breaks, um, is a good idea just, just in case. And in fact, um, you should keep a blank copy of, uh, you know, a Trezor or whatever, whatever wallet that you use, um, available along with your mnemonic C wherever you're storing it so that you can do a complete restore and it should it should already be sealed and uh, make sure that it hasn't been tampered with before um, before you open it and so on uh, but these are some good uh, best security practices also um, try to keep your mnemonic seed in some sort of uh, tamper evident um, way. Um, oftentimes you can uh, get temper evidence stickers um, in case somebody does something. Although, you know, if they do look at your seed, you pretty much lost your money uh, at that point anyway. But, you know, it's, some, it's something that uh, that you can at least prove somebody, you know, mess with it while it was in your bank vault or wherever it is that you store it. Anyway, these are some of the things that you should definitely think about before you do a firmware restore. Um, remember, the mnemonic seed is all you really need. Uh, the hardware isn't necessarily the thing that will, um, you know, I mean, it, it, it is very convenient, but that's not the only way to get that stuff back. So um, do think about that uh, and, you know, uh, hopefully that helps you. This song is done.